Hello, welcome back. Today we're gonna learn how we can service one of these. So it's gonna be full service, going through everything. And the reason why we need this, you can see over here. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah, dude, I literally lost it. Oh, it's really, really crammed up against the shit. Okay. Even though you don't maybe have these exact brakes, this is gonna show you like how hydraulic disc brakes work. They are pretty much the same with just like different parts and details. In general, just like some basic tools, good to have, right? Something like that. Usually you're gonna need a pick to pick out some of the seals. That's gonna be helpful. Service kit, or maybe you don't have a service kit and you actually just need some lubrication for your actual parts, right? You don't always need to replace everything. Sometimes it's just good to lube some shit up. Like I said, maybe you need some specific Ooh, something is leaking. Fortunately, we are here in the bathroom where something is always leaking. So let's just remove that. This is some high-end shit, okay? Anyways, Hope has some specific tools. This is for the bore caps. That's gonna be needed. Some grease, You're gonna need something to clean with. This is not hairspray. It's just the rubbing alcohol in a hairspray bottle. You know, get some stuff clean. And in the end, I think you probably should have like, probably not like below average IQ, since that varies a bit. Okay, let's get going. All right, step number one. You're removing this small little pin. You can just twist it off. Poof. Then you're gonna want to remove the pads. And just, you know, keep these pads away from this whole project because it's gonna get a bit messy and we don't need that mess on our pads. So that's just simple as that. So pad, spring, and pad. We need to push the pistons out. So we want to push this part out first, because then we're gonna remove the bore caps and then put out these pistons. Just the park tools, TL5, master blaster. We can just block this side with our hands, pull it, and then just keep pushing the other side out. Okay, so here we can see the pistons are pushed out, and now we're gonna actually push them all the way out to loosen from the actual uh, caliper. Push in the other side first. I'm gonna put a bit of paper towel here just because this is probably going to get a bit messy. Now we're just gonna pump this again until the pistons actually come out. Yeah, that other side is moving a bit too easily, so I'm gonna block it again. Now I'm pushing all the way. Now the boys are really close. There it goes, that's one piston. You can look at the condition of these. If they are like super bad and scuffed, then you probably need to change them. And I can actually just pull the other one out. An ice tray is the perfect tool to just keep all your parts collected. Keep your masterlings in there. Whenever you need one, just grab it, have yourself rum and coke, and wait for it to sink in. I'm using the size eight. There we go. And here a tip, just like keep track of the order of things that you're removing. So this needs some leverage. There we go. I'm just gonna pop whatever's in there in this little tin. And now you can just see that piston in there. So same thing for the other side, put a bit of force in it, there we go, now we can just pop that sucker out, and I mean just be careful when you do this, you don't want to hurt the inside of the caliper or scratch it in any way. Pro tip, if you're super careful about your calipers, use something with like a rubber coating, pushing them in that direction into the caliper. There we go. And now it's completely empty and we just need to clean this one out. Also remove the, the bleed cap, removing the rubber little nipple guide. Nipple guide? <laughs> Please guide my nipples. So we're just removing this boy. This is something that can start leaking if this seal is bad. Uh, this one looks okay. Coat the whole damn thing in alcohol. Get it all in there. Then just go at it with a toothbrush. Yeah. 
There you go, now it's clean. See? And we're doing this just to like start off. We haven't removed the seals yet, but I just want it to be like sort of clean. Lint free cloth, because paper gets so annoying because you get the fibers everywhere. Somewhat clean. Yeah, we're back in the bathroom because the lighting here is a bit more powerful, but I'm just like. <laughs> It sort of sucks trying to film this in here, god damn it. Inside every part of the piston, one, two, three, four, you have these seals. And whenever these gets dry, dirty, or just a bit scratched up, then you can have like leaking, seizing of the pistons. And the seal is on the inside, carefully without scratching, dig it in there. And now we can pull it out. That's number one. This is a toothpick on a stick. Who says that this is not going to work? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay, maybe this was a bad idea. No, I'm not gonna give up. Okay, toothpick on a stick, take two. Yeah. You look at that. Number two. This is your mom's hair clip. Give it a bit of a bend. Give it a bit of a, give it a bit of a, give it a bit of a bend. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger. Yeah, so you know, most things work and this concept you can apply to anything in life. You don't really need to have all that sort of perfect thing. Just have whatever works and apply it to figure shit out, you know? Get into that area where the piston seals were seated. Maybe you happen to have a toothpick on a stick and you can just scrub this stuff. Man, I think we just like reinvented the entire bike business with this. Wait a few minutes for the alcohol to evaporate. And make sure that you breathe in those fumes, man. While you're waiting, just clean up your piston seals. A bit of Hunter's silicone lube. And we're putting this in the ceilings for the seals, just a tiny bit. Lube all, the, all of the seals up here. There's not really a right or wrong way. A tip though is to squeeze it a bit and then you put them inside and it's easier to go from the inside. And you shouldn't need like any excessive force or violence to do this. You can leave that to the police. Obviously there should not be any twists or turns in the in the seals, like uh, them turning around or anything. So they should be all flat. It can get extremely <laughs> aggravating to get these seals in because they're like lubed up and they're like just wobbling around. Don't take it out on your kids or significant other, okay? You know, a while back you can just drop kick your wife and it's gonna be like no problems, but you cannot do that anymore. Behave, be a good guy and fix your brakes. Have you cleaned your pistons? Why not? I didn't tell you to. Okay, clean your pistons. Check them for wear as well. You can see the flat side is going towards the brake pads and the tapered side is going inwards towards the caliper. All right, so we're lubing these boys up as well. It's time for the reinstall of the pistons. The reinstall of the pistons. First side you should go is the side that does not have the bore caps. So the inside. Take note of the direction of the pistons. It's really important that you put them in straight. Hold the piston from each side. Just a tiny bit of pressure from the top, now I'm pushing it in carefully. There we go. Okay, okay, good. I will do. I'm applying a bit of pressure, just a tiny bit, so I can balance this thing and get it straight. Carefully pushing the thing in. Oh my god. And they were like flowing so much nicer now that it's all lubed up. Straight in, all the way, because I need the space in here. We need to enter from the inside, pushing in that direction. Make sure that everything is straight. I'm just pushing by hand. Other silicone lube, because it's a bit firmer. There is a seal here, so we're gonna take care of that. We can just attach now. So one. Tightening that, stop, and here, stop. So now we have a fully rebuilt caliper. You can just attach the bleed the nipple to the bleed port again. 
it's sort of half covered in lube now from handling it. Just like clean this guy up. I actually like to also like go inside a bit, clean out the outside of the pistons. Perfect. Now we're moving into the bit more spicy section. You made it halfway, so I congratulate you on that. So remove the brake line from the lever. You have the shroud on the hose, just push it down a bit. You also have this copper washer, don't want to lose it. T10 Torx. Now we have your lid and you have your bladder rubber thing. The fluid in here for now. You're moving this clip. So you need one of those like weird plier things. I don't have that. Okay, so I'm just gonna... There we go. I got it. I did bend it a little bit, uh, but I'm just gonna bend that back. So now we're gonna remove the entire lever. It removes from the bottom to the top, towards the reservoir. You need to loosen up this little bolt inside the lever, just a tiny bit, because that is pushing on this uh, bearing thing. Just loosening this guy up a tiny bit, a four millimeter. And why it's a four is because this can actually fit through the entire thing. So this can get stuck sometimes. It's gonna be either hard or easy to get it out. I'm just gonna push a bit. Okay, it's not stuck. So now I've replaced <laughs> the silver thing with the tool. Now this is all loose. If I let go, just like that. I'm just gonna keep this together for now so we remember how the parts connect. That's a good tip. And here we have the monster piston. This is what you push to make the brake function. That's not how it's supposed to sound. This needs to be aligned when you reinstall it. So you can just remove that. You have this little thing. Don't lose the spring. Other than that, this is just it, you know. Put the spring in there. Make sure it's all aligned. Also winning awards for easiest part to lose. This little thing. This goes in here. It uh, makes sure that your spring stays in place. You need a T10 security Torx. This is one bolt attached. Just hold on to it with your thumb a bit when you're releasing this. Now it's loose. Yeah, and this is all very dried up. It doesn't look too good. Let's change these seals. One, two, three, and should be able to work it out fine. I'm just gonna replace the whole thing basically. Now I'm gonna go through and clean everything. Just clean all the parts, clean everything so it's nice and tidy. So there are no bearings in here. And I would actually suggest not to like lubricate all this stuff too much because that's just gonna attract dirt. Then it's just gonna get a lot of friction. This is meant to work without having a bunch of grease on everything. But we are going to lubricate the spring and that's the main part. Hopefully now you have done your due diligence. Ooh, due diligence, due diligence, due... Hopefully now you have done your due diligence. Oh my God, I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Maybe you're replacing the seals. So the bigger part, like they are coned. So the cone is going in that direction. And I'm using the silicone grease for this one. You don't want to get like a ton of it on this part because uh, that's going to actually be exposed to the elements. We're going to drop it in, boop, adding it on top, pushing on the piston, and then tightening the bolt. It's now moving, and there's no weird sound. You can't even hear that there's a spring in there, so we did a good job with that. Please note that you should not put any grease or anything on this spring. Placing it into the lever. Then we have the secondary part. They go together like this. Put out the reach adjustment a bit. So we're taking this. Then we're gonna take this rod. One step at a time. There we go. Reattach this bolt underneath the lever blade. 
also reattaching our clip to the bottom here. That works fine by hand. Attach the hose again, and then you do a proper Blake. <laughs> Blake? <laughs> That's a Chinese way. Then you do a proper break bleed of the entire system. And I'm actually just going to link to Hope's uh, video on this because it's super nice and very straightforward. Just follow that proper service for your entire brakes. Good job. As for me, I think I'm just going to sit down here next to a few new tires and just wait for, for a better day. Mm -hmm.